My name is James Lynch and welcome to Dollars with Cents. Today we have Anouk Pinchetti from the Blockchain Centre Melbourne and we'll be talking about blockchain technology and its application to business. Who benefits? Retail clients, governments or companies? Or perhaps everybody can. Anouk, welcome to the show. Thanks, James. Welcome back. Last time we talked a little bit about basic blockchain, some of the key terms and essentially what it is. Uh, today we're going to take an opportunity to discuss blockchain technology and its application to business. Uh, it's a space that you work in full time. Uh, you work down in the Blockchain Centre Melbourne, is that right? I do, okay. I do. And tell us a little bit about the Blockchain Centre. So the Blockchain Centre is a community hub, a co-working space and an education centre. So those are the three pillars. Uh, there's lots of workshops happening there to teach people straight off the street who are just beginning to hear about it, as well as a hub for those who have been in the space for years to actually discuss some of the more intricate issues of the technology. Okay, sure. And I, I imagine you see you've got technology and you've got ideas and you've got businesses coming through the door uh, quite regularly. What are some of the applications or even probably more exciting applications of blockchain technology that you're seeing uh, in, you know, the, the, I suppose the public and the private space? So there's a lot of these. Um, the, the obvious ones tend to be around fintech, uh, around the ability to send money overseas without paying $30 in bank fees, for instance, sure. uh, just to, to be faster and cheaper and more efficient. Uh, there are a lot of very interesting projects happening around supply chain technology. So okay. the ability to trace goods step by step by step and allow everyone independently to verify whether goods were sourced in a particular country, whether they're organic, fair trade, and all of these sorts of qualities um, to be open and transparent. So that's another side of it. Um, there are a lot of projects that are looking forward further into the future and looking forward to put real estate onto the blockchain or voting for, you know, for democracy. Um, a lot of those projects are not necessarily technical problems, but more social and political issues to be resolved. So the technology is a little ahead of where governments and people are you know, in terms of their readiness to adopt. Sure. But you can be assured that a lot of governments are really looking at these projects quite closely. Uh, the Estonian government has got a uh, e-citizenship that, you know, project and it's adopting um, blockchain technologies far ahead of uh, the rest of the world in that respect. Yeah, I, I understand it's become quite an ICO hub over the last <laughs> few years for a number of reasons. It has. And certainly the e-citizenship's got a lot to do with that. So going back to the supply chain, and I think that's mm. a really nice example. It really brings, I suppose, a new meaning to paddock to plate, for example. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've both been out, <clears throat> you know, at the pub and, you know, they, they, they offer you that paddock to plate uh, menu and, you know, this is where, you, you know, your steak's been sourced from or your veggies or whatever it may be. But in many respects, I mean, we're kind of going on what the menu says and, you know, we're trusting the reputation of that particular um, establishment with this blockchain technology and supply chain tr tracking. Uh, perhaps if we had a stamp of, you know, approval that it's used XYZ, you know, blockchain tracking system, then we could be assured that every step of the way that that, you know, piece of broccoli from the minute it was pulled out of the ground to the minute it's put on our plates, um, we can basically see where it's gone. Absolutely. Uh, it doesn't solve all the problems of falsification of documents and those sorts of issues that today's supply chains have. Mm -hmm. But by capturing it at each step and having that publicly published, at least you get rid of the issues where different people are keeping different sets of records and just, you know, single-handedly disposing of the unfortunate aspects. And that is one way to increase the transparency. Transparency is a term that comes up time and time again, you know, and it, I, I think it's a really interesting almost dichotomy, you know, sort of with, with blockchain in that, um, how important is transparency, you know, with respect to reputation? Uh, but on the other hand, obviously, you know, there's certain elements of it, you know, where privacy is required. I mean, how does the technology, you know, particularly from a business point of view, which is handling, you know, sensitive documents, find that balance? 
So it has a lot to do with uh, encryption, cryptography, and that's really a case-by-case -case basis for different applications and different projects. So as you're looking at supply chain technology integration, so there are a lot of industries where different companies might not want everything to be on a public blockchain for starters. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of the time what, um, what you actually find is that a blockchain alone is actually not enough. Uh, you, because blockchains tend to be replicated to every party, you also require actually distributed storage that needs to be secure and encrypted natively and then to allow different transactions of access requests to information within that separate secure storage to be able to be traded. And there are a lot of projects around that, around self-sovereign identity okay. as well. So if I was a business owner or I had an idea and you know, I wanted to work out whether or not you know, I could apply blockchain technology to it, where would I start? Well, one good place to start is to drop by the blockchain center and find out what it's all about. Okay. But also um, start taking a look at your supply chain. Start you know, speaking with the other parties along your supply chain and what are the actual issues that you're running into. Mm -hmm. If you have no problem to solve, then there's no need for sure. a blockchain. Uh, so that's sort of the main thing. And the other one is um, I wouldn't jump in with both feet and upend your business. I would actually look at taking something that's a, a incidental part to the business like a loyalty program that if something goes wrong in a loyalty program, it doesn't create significant risk to your business. Sure, okay then. So, so is that way we're sort of keeping those core business functions away and Correct. then there's obviously an opportunity to blend it in at a later stage. Or and you can develop your, your business readiness or your blockchain readiness, if you will, over time as people within your organization and the partnerships between organizations start to be ready to adopt this technology at a greater, to a greater extent. So if I was a business owner now, do you think it would be wise to be thinking about a blockchain readiness plan or a strategy or at least on the back of a napkin putting something down? Absolutely. Um, it's, it's like the internet in the mid 90s. Yep. So you didn't need a website back then, but today um, you would be really upset if you didn't own your own domain name. Uh, Nissan.com is actually one to look at for that, yes. which is not actually a website that's owned by the car manufacturer, as an example. Okay. So that's sort of a situation where you need to watch out for what's coming ahead and also you know, establish what the risks are. Mm. What happens if somebody else builds the blockchain that changes your industry? Is that likely to happen? What's the time frame for that? That depends on an industry by industry basis. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, James. We've just been speaking with Anouk Pinchetti from the Blockchain Centre in Melbourne. The applications of blockchain can extend to a variety of businesses. If you've got any questions as to whether or not it could basically be applied to yours or ideas that you think might be worthy of blockchain, the Blockchain Centre in Melbourne is certainly a good place to start and there's plenty of reading available on the internet. For more information on what we've talked about today, visit dollarswithcents.com.au.